courses. So today's lesson, um, it's a really basic lesson actually. Um, I mean, it could get complex, but it's basic in the sense that we're just doing a horse as it's galloping, it's running right towards us. So with that, we'll just jump right over to our drawing table. Okay, so as we jump in, um, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to write them in the comments. And I'm just gonna simply start by uh, massing in a broad shape. And as I mess in this shape, what I'm doing is, um, I'm really just trying to think of a horse galloping towards me. So like my first, the first element of my drawing, I think is gonna look like kind of like funny because it's going to be essentially like a box, a box that's advancing towards me. And so if this right here, you can think of this as being a cube, then that box right there, it's coming at me. And so I'm thinking of it, it's not a perfect cube. Um, it's a little bit off, but I could tidy it up. And so uh, the horse's body, I'm trying to reduce it as best I can to being the most basic shape. And the most basic shape in this instance is, you know, a cube that's advancing towards us. And if you guys are ever drawing a horse or something of that sort, you could say to yourself like, oh, it's really difficult. And like, there's like so much going on. But if you can think of a horse's body as actually just being just like this cardboard box, then you can think of, okay, how does a horse look in profile? We'll take the box and you turn it on its side. How does it look when it's kind of coming towards you? It looks like that. How does it look like when it's rearing up and you say, oh, it looks like a box again. Um, it's not the most perfect box for it, given the shape, but it's just something that I had nearby. So I'm thinking of the body of the horse as kind of like being the, the rib cage of it. It's kind of like this cube right here. And then the back of the horse, so the pelvis of the horse, is kind of like another cube yet again, but it's tilted, it's angled a little bit. And it's like angled like towards me somewhat. And so as I have that um, like a little bit smaller, the pelvis angle towards me, there's a little bit of a dip right here and it comes up. And then I'm going to jump over to the neck and the head of the horse. So for the neck and the head of the horse, again, I'm thinking of all this as being uh, the term that I use over and over again is geometric essence. And so this is like a geometric essence shape. Um, one of the things I love in doing a drawing demonstration, I just gotta admit, is that my drawing demonstrations never look like the thing they're supposed to look like for like the first like five, 10 minutes or something like that. Uh, but even though it, it kind of adds to the suspense. So you might be looking at this lesson and be like, Kevin, that looks nothing like a horse. Where are you going with this? But just bear with me, have a cube, have another cube, and then we're gonna do like almost like a almost like a cone for the neck and it's good to see you back aiden finland i'm glad to have you back on here glad everything is connecting all right so here we have the cylinder and it's almost like a cylinder that got chopped a little bit that is the horse's neck more or less right there and so that cylinder you know it's not a perfect cylinder but it's kind of shaped like so. And then for the horse's head, I'm gonna think of the horse's upper head almost as being like, let's say like, it, it's almost like a cube itself. So again, I'm asking, I'm challenging you guys today to think of things in, pretty, um, in a pretty unusual way. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow it down and I'm gonna take all these items, I'm gonna move them to the side. So we have a cube right here. So I'm gonna do another drawing of the cube right over here so you can see kind of where I'm going with this. So that's almost like a cube coming towards us. So that's that shape right there. And then we have another cube in the back right here. And so that's kind of like another box in the back coming off like so and that's right here and I know again it's, it sounds like pretty weird at the moment but this right here is almost like a cylinder or a cone I should say sorry 
And then cones we know are pointy, but just chop the top of that cone off. Now, you don't have to do all these little things right here. I just want to keep you posted on where I'm going with all this. This right here is another cube coming off the side of here. So that's that. So, okay, so now I have all those shapes roughly mapped out. Now it's time for the horse's mouth. So the horse's mouth, um, if the upper head feels kind of like box-like, then the horse's mouth feels very much like it's like a cylinder or a cone. And so I'm just gonna go ahead in, I'm gonna put in a long cone like so. So you guys, uh, if you, at this point in the lesson, if you're getting scared that it's never gonna look like a horse by the end of the lesson, uh, it's understandable. And I love it when I can see that some of you who keep your screens on and make you laugh. And that's my whole goal with all these lessons. <laughs> um, so, okay, so now for the lower legs, we're gonna do more cylinders, more cones. So um, if you look at, let's say your arm, and you say, okay, I wanna draw a person's arm. I talk about this a lot on the website. If you wanna draw a person's arm, it's a lot of, look at all the detail on my arm. There's like a vein running right here. There's a little hair right here. That's, it's very confusing. It's very hard to do. But if you say, well, no, I just want to think of Kevin's arm as being nothing more than just a, a pipe. It's just like a long pipe that tapers. Then all of a sudden that very confusing arm with a lot of information becomes a whole lot simpler. That very confusing arm, then um, you can kind of like, you can kind of like create it in your mind and also look at it. So as I do the front leg of the horse, I'm choosing to see this as being like a cone right here. And then I'm going to put the, between the upper leg of the horse and the lower leg of the horse, there's a knuckle I'm gonna call it a knuckle. It's not at all a knuckle. So like, just so you know, um, I'm using, on purpose, I'm using all the wrong terms, but I just wanna show you how you can think of this as being like almost like a joint for the horse, like my wrist right here, or you can think of it as almost being a knuckle. It's just where two planes meet and there's a joint. So here's a plane of my arm, here's a plane of my arm, and then my arm moves right here and there's this like, box almost right there for the horse. And that's gonna turn, and yet again, we're gonna have a cone. But this time the cone goes in the opposite direction. From here to here, it's thick to thin. From here to here, it's thin to thick, it flips. And the last stage of the horse is kind of like a disc. And you can think of it almost as being like, like, the last stage of a horse, the horse's hoof, you can almost think of it as being this jam jar lid where you have like this, this disc surface. You see how when I spin it, it changes shape, right? So as you're working, I want you to think of the horse's hoof as almost being like a hockey puck or like a disc, like so. All right, so we have the one leg right here. Now let's go with the other leg. So the other leg gonna kind of be similar and it's gonna come down um, a little bit further right here. And that is like a cone right here and a cone right here. And we're gonna kind of let this leg go a little bit. We're not gonna do so much detail because it's, it's gonna turn. And so I'm just gonna let this like kind of like, I went with a cone right here and then another cube right here. So it's like a cone and then a box. And then I'm just gonna kind of let that leg go. And I'm gonna jump over to another area of the horse. So again, we're thinking of the horse as charging towards us. Um, and so as a horse is charging towards us, we want to, to have this sense of it like advancing. Like it's like coming like this and it's advancing towards you, but slightly to the side. So as I work on this, I'm gonna go with the back legs now. So here's the back leg of the horse. The back leg of the horse 
is again it's kind of like you could think of it as being a cone or you could think of it as being i don't know like maybe like a a cube that's like facing towards us and i'll probably um it'll get pretty tight where i'll allow this drawing to run off the page a little bit and i don't care about that that doesn't really bother me so then the remember we talked about like look at your fingers for a moment and take a look at how here is one digit of your finger there's the next digit right one digit there's the next and between those digits we have this hinge point that we call a knuckle but look at how your knuckle is a little bit kind of like bulbous like it has like something like it's got like a little bit of mass to it so mine's like straight and then it's kind of round and then it's straight a horse's is kind of like i'll say straight it doesn't matter and then it has this like box and then it has another straight so as i work on the horse's rear leg it's almost like there's this like extra moment where there's this box where the joint is that's more or less we can think of that as being essentially as being like almost like the horse's um knee to ankle and then we're going to go with another straight again so again i'm allowing that to run right off the page and sorry that I forgot to change the camera angle and thank you for writing to me to do so. <laughs> um, so now I'm going on to the other leg. So this is, I like the angle of this leg right here. And the angle of this leg comes back like this. And if there's any of you, if there are any of you that are horse riders um, in this uh, call today, I'd love to hear from you and just say, if you ride horses. Okay, so that is like one moment on the horse's leg and then it turns and it goes like, like that. And there's another moment on the horse's leg. So I keep bringing it back again and again. Horse can be very confusing if you think of it in terms of like, oh, there's just all these like moments like going on, like what's going on. But if you think it through and you say, hey, my hand can turn really abruptly and my wrist can turn really abruptly and it can go my arm and then let's say the back of my hand right here or i'm not going to lift my foot up but you think of your leg and then you think of your foot and now it can change really abruptly so what we have going on right here on the horse is all of the horse's anatomy actually has its distant parallel to the human anatomy it's just built for an entirely different purpose I always like to say that God designed these things. When he designed them, he designed them to a specific purpose. And it's one of the things I love about drawing so much. I can see like, in a way, the artistic mind of God at work. So there is the, um, we would regard this as almost being his ankle. And then here would be like almost the change to, we're going down now to like his, essentially what would be his toes in, in the horse world. And then we go back again to that hockey puck that I was talking about. So the, the disc of the hoof. And then as you want to draw a horse's hoof, you can actually hold a jam jar lid and you can like tilt it. You can say, oh, I could draw that. I could draw that. So then we go over here and I'm going to have another disc right here. So the disc obviously is taller than a jam jar disc. Now, I don't know if you can see it yet at this point, but for me, I can already start to see a horse galloping. I mean, personally, you could say like, hey, hey, hey don't compliment yourself so much, Kevin. Um, no, I can see a horse galloping and it's pretty exciting for me. So I'm going to jump over, I'm gonna grab my eraser and what I'm gonna do, hey, cool, I got a thumbs up <laughs> from somebody who could see the horse galloping, <laughs> nice. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the horse's cool tail. Um, I, I like the way that this horse's tail, um, how it just like kind of goes off into like the wind. And I think I probably made a little bit too long. I think I have to rope that in a little bit. I'm probably more accustomed to my dog, which has a very long tail. But uh, there's the horse's tail right there. And then when you think of a horse's ears, a horse's ears can typically just be summed up in such a simple way. Um, you, can, you can get a horse's ears 
I literally just thinking of it as being triangles. So here I have right here, I'm gonna put a triangle. And again, I ran out of room for the top of the drawing and for the bottom, um, but that doesn't bother me too much. It's not like every drawing I do is always gonna fit on, on the page. It's, it's just not a big deal for me if it doesn't always fit. So it's almost like another two triangles right here. And with that, we're gonna jump over to the mane and we're gonna get the mane like flowing long like off the back of its neck. So, all right, so for the mane, it's just gonna kind of be this like nice flowing short line that comes off right there. So what I do at this point is I take a look and I check the proportions. Like I'll ask myself, is the body too big? Is the head too small? Vice versa. Um, did I make the ears way too big? And I just kind of take a look at it and there's no other way of saying it. But at that point, I just have to kind of, in looking at it, say, okay, um, it feels too big or it feels too small. There are other ways of going about it, but for a quick sketch, I just go by feeling pretty much. But everything feels like it's lining up pretty good. Um, so now I'm in the stage where I can start to kind of like stitch it all together. And by stitching it all together, um, what I do is I make my way around the horse to try to like really give it like a sense of like, okay, this thing has like shoulders. So I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to, this is a kneaded eraser. Uh, you can do it also with like, let's say a, like a hard eraser or the back of your pencil. You don't specifically need, you don't need a kneaded eraser. See what I did there? Um, but this eraser helps me to kind of like ghost something. And when I say ghosting something, what I mean by that is I can feather the surface of something and kind of cause it to go away a little bit, but it's not completely uh, erased and it's not completely there. It's kind of in the middle. So these kneaded erasers, uh, if you don't own one, uh, you can ask your parents and they're pretty easy to get. And so what I'll do is I'll ghost the, the back of the horse and so you can you see how the um, drawing is still there, but it's not so strong anymore. And now what I do is I try to get the horse's shoulder right here. And then I think of like the horse's, um, I think of the horse's uh, spinal cord. And so the horse's spinal cord, remember how we had this box right here um, and how it curled up? Well, this, the spine is gonna curl up on this horse and then it's gonna come around. So in essence, what I'm doing a lot of right now is, is I'm actually rounding off these geometric angular ideas that I had in the beginning. I'm like kind of like rounding them off. And you could say, well, I would love to do this drawing without having the, the, you know, the early lines where now I could see it like showing through. But there's ways of getting rid of that. Uh, there's ways of working with lighter pencils. But I would encourage you to go with a drawing that you maybe don't feel um, that you maybe don't feel uh, has to be so perfect in terms of no erasures. But give yourself a little bit of freedom. So okay, coming down to here. Now I have the lower leg. This is the back leg. I could have started over here, but I just felt to go there. And now I come to the belly of the horse. So really, when you're drawing the underside of the horse's uh, belly right here, you're not really drawing the horse's belly, you're drawing the horse's rib cage. Um, I have over here, hiding behind, I don't know if you can see, you know what, I should walk over and get it so that you can see the parallel to what I'm working on at the moment. So I have here my buddy, Skeletor. And Skeletor, I actually will look at human anatomy as I work on a drawing of a horse. And you could be like, why would you ever do that? Well, when you look at human anatomy, it helps you actually to better understand. So imagine a human is tilted forward. The rib cage is gonna be pretty big and the stomach is gonna be pretty small right here. So when you're working on a horse, you want to think in terms of like, hey, that horse has a huge rib cage and he's tilted forward. This guy's vertical, but if he was that way, the rib cage would come pretty far. And so it just helps you understand what it is that you're drawing at this moment. 
So, okay, let's go to the front of the horse right here. And the front of the horse's neck is powerful. I mean, it has these like ropey, powerful muscles that run right in the front right here. We can't go into the specifics of those, but um, that's where, I mean, when I see a horse, it's really distinguished by the immensity of these ropey, powerful muscles. And then we have in the front, this would be almost like the horse's uh, shoulders right here. I mean, not quite, but I'm just using it as the best parallel that I can. And then coming down, we're just going to, I can't narrate all the visual steps, but I do uh, try my best to help you understand what's going on. Because as ever, the way to produce a beautiful drawing is by observing really well, but also in addition to observing, to understanding. I like both. So, all right, so this is obviously very angular. So now I'm gonna bring this some more graceful lines. It's almost as if I'm taking the horse's legs and they started out as like very clean cylinders or very clean cones. And now I'm turning them into like bowling pins. So can you see how this looks like a bowling pin? So right here, it almost looks, I'll do a little blowout right here. It almost looks like a bowling pin that is like tilted and like upside down like that right there. So I, I kind of have that going on a little bit right here. And then again, we think of the horse's um, joint right here, almost as being like a true square. I'll erase away that earlier square. And then this, the lower part of the horse's leg is almost like a bowling pin turn the other direction. So I'll do a little blowout right here. So it's almost like a bowling pin turned in the other direction. So not the most perfect bowling pins, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's little tricks like that are so helpful to me as an artist. By thinking of something and summarizing it as being like, let's say a horse's leg can look like flipped bowling pins with a square in the middle, that helps me so much. And thank you so much, buddy. I love Joe getting the thumbs up. <laughs> That's really awesome, buddy. So, okay, so I go bowling pin upside down to a square right here, very, very square, to another bowling pin, to like a hockey puck right here. And, all right, so now I'm making my way onto the far leg in the back. And that is something I just kind of have to do visibly. It is admittedly a little bit tricky, but I will just do my best to say it's another bowling pin that's facing away from us a little bit. And then I'm just going to kind of let that melt right there into the distance. All right, so the rear leg back here, do you remember we, we right here we have that bowling pin which kind of comes in kind of comes in right here. Well, that rear leg kind of comes in as well, right here. And I'll just erase away the underdrawing so you can see that more clearly. So it kind of comes in like a bowling pin, kind of comes in like a bowling pin right here. And then this part is extremely straight. The angle that we're looking at this part of the leg is just very, very straight. And then we have again that joint and the joint. By this point, we really could be thinking in terms of our feet with our toes. It's almost as if this is the back of the foot and then, or the top of the foot, and then this is the knuckles that go down to the toes. And then another huge, deep hockey puck. And if you want to think of different ways of conceiving of these things, um, by all means, do so. Um, you don't have to stay with my bowling pin analogies. It's just something I do in my own work in the early stages. All right, so now I'm back to this leg over here. And I will mess in the joint right here. 
and then it goes very, very straight for that lower leg. All right, so we're getting to the point where it's time for us to um, jump into the face. I'd like to get the face in nice and good. And so what I'm gonna do for the face is I'm gonna start out with the lower part of the horse's mouth. Um, yeah, I, sh I shouldn't say the mouth. I'm, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna point it out on my face. It's his jaw, but there's this whole area on the horse right here, and I'm not gonna get into the specific anatomy, but it's this huge round moment right here on the, on the horse. So I'm gonna jump over to that. And it's like this huge rounded area. And then we have the horse's muzzle or his mouth right here. There was one horse when I was a boy in Ireland that um, nobody ever wanted to ride on because the horse would turn around if you were bad at riding and he would bite you in the leg. And I always got stuck with that horse because I was a little kid and I wasn't that good at riding, I can assure you that. And I remember him turning around and it, you'd never bite me and draw blood, but it hurt. <laughs> so, okay, so there is the top of the horse's head. I think maybe you can see why I chose to see the top of the head as being almost like a cube. And then the horse has eyes that I can't quite place it. I'm just gonna be honest. Like, are they, pull, are they in front? No, not entirely. Like human eyes are pretty much exactly in front. Are they on the side, almost like a chameleon or something like that? No, they're not on the side. They're like right in the middle. They're like right here, which allows them to see very wide. So as I'm doing the horse's eyes, they're these, horse's eyes are huge. In case you've never been around a horse before, I mean, their eyes are so big. Uh, and yet they have like on the outside of them, um, this eye socket. And let me, Try to get a little bit more detailed with that. And so it's like the eye socket houses the eyeball, right? And there's even horses have eyelashes and good thing they do because they kick up so much dust that they have to be able to blink and catch that dust so it doesn't get caught in their eye. All right, so now we're on to the horse's nose and the horse's nose um, to me, it just looks so much like a giraffe's nose right here. <laughs> and I'm going to erase away some of the strong lines I did up here. And maybe I did have room for that upper ear after all. Maybe I went a little bit too high. So I'm going to bring the top of the head. I think I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I think I went a little bit too high. And maybe the ears do fit on my drawing after all, on my page. So... Let me see, I'm gonna give those ears a little bit more. They started as pure triangles, and now they're kind of like, I don't know, they just kind of look like a wave or something like that. And then here's the front ear, right here. And I'm gonna give the horse some kind of like nice flowing hair right here. Okay, so let's jump to the back tail. And the back tail is all curves. Everything on the back tail, a lot of this is angular right here, but the back tail is all really beautiful curves. And so you could just run with like what, what is called a serpentine line. Sometimes they call it an arabesque. Um, it's very much like the letter S where it's like, so you can see the letter S there. And so you just kind of get those long flowing lines. Now we have a few minutes left. And so um, this is a stage which I personally find really fun. I'm going to tidy up. I'm going to clean out the middle, get rid of all those early searching lines. And now what I'm going to do is you've seen me reach over before and you've seen me um, grab some graphite powder. And so I'm gonna grab some graphite powder just to show you. So I keep some graphite powder. Uh, this is a tube actually that they sell for cigars. Uh, but I take, it's ground up pencil and I just put a little bit in my hand like that. And I don't know if you can see. So I ha now have ground up pencil 
that I can put down on my drawing. So this is a dark horse. So again, a little bit of graphite powder right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close up my graphite powder holder and check this out. I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to blend in like this beautiful dark coat that the horse has. Now you could say, I don't have any graphite powder and I can't do what you're doing. Actually, if you just have a normal pencil, you can do exactly what I'm doing. Uh, you just take the pencil and you shade like this and you can get all the dark. I have the pencil very much on its side and I'm shading with the broad side of the pencil. And then you can take your finger and you can smudge it. Now, do you see how similar this looks to this? The reason why I use graphite powder, especially on these uh, live streams, is because I can move faster. And as the teacher of the course, it just enables me to give you kind of like a better product quicker. But you can get the same effect with a pencil and just blending it with your fingers. And that's one of the things I loved about learning to study art from different areas of the world. The Russians are very much into drawing with your drawing with your fingers, drawing, they even draw with paintbrushes. They dip paintbrushes in water and then put it in graphite powder and they almost like paint with graphite. It's so cool. And so you can see how I can get like this coat of this horse and I could spend a lot of time on it, but do you see how it's all of a sudden becoming something really cool looking? And you can get a lot of subtlety in here. I'm just going to move pretty fast. I'm just smudging in. I'm not going to make it too dark. I could always make it darker. But I just want to unify the drawing for you so that you can see where you can go with this. And again, don't worry if you don't have graphite powder. Probably very few of you, if any of you, have graphite powder. Uh, just do everything that I'm doing with the number two pencil or with the number three pencil. They have 4B, 5B, 6B. Um, and then you can blend it with your finger. And with that, I pretty much have my horse. I'm going to go back in. Here is a much darker pencil. It's called a 5B pencil. And what I'm going to do with my 5B pencil is I'm going to lock in this guy's eyeball so that I could see it real nice, rich and dark. And there is, is his eye, really nice, rich and dark. And then here is the nose right here. And with a few other accents, maybe I'll go a little bit darker here. And then I'll go a little bit darker over here. Just some areas, they just kind of like punch it. And then maybe I'll go darker on the main coming off right here. And with that, I have pretty, pretty general, kind of like locked in shape of a horse. There's so much further that I could go with this. Um, I will be uploading this to YouTube so you could see this video develop further. And that is pretty much my horse. There's a silkiness to the coat that you can get by going back in with an eraser and kind of like pulling in these like beautiful highlights and things of that sort. And I appreciate everyone hopping on the call. Sorry that we ran over a bit, had some volume issues in the beginning and I'll talk to you guys next week.
Thank you.